Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Deborah Lynn here in the studio. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. You guys, I am starting the process here with the 140 pound cold pressed paper. This is Fabriano Artistico paper, and it is 100% cotton. I am going in and I am dropping in pigment to the top section of this paper. I am grabbing Prussian blue is what I'm using today. And I am creating this color wash. I don't have the paper pinned down to a board or anything. I'm keeping it very loose so that way I can manipulate the paper, even if I wanted to curl the paper in certain areas, or I, I just have the ability to manipulate. So therefore, I don't pin it down on a board. Uh, the paper is starting off dry. This is not pre-wet. The only time it's wet is when I start putting water down on it from my brush, or it's running down um, in a flow motion from just gravity. So that's how my paper eventually gets wet. But in this early portion of this painting, what's happening here is I'm creating this wash, but it is also creating white spaces. And those white spaces are very, very key. They're very important to not close everything in with your brush, okay? Right now, I am dropping in some sap green, okay? So there's sap green and Prussian blue down right now. And so I don't close in those areas because they allow me to... Uh, build or build something around it or build something out of it. Sometimes um, when you look at your color wash that you may have down, you may see things emerging. Um, I have a tendency to paint landscapes and I also predominantly, I'm a watercolorist that loves to paint loose flowers. So I'm always looking for exactly that. I'm looking for flowers. Um, I'm not really particularly looking for a face or maybe an animal so much and then turn it into that. That's not me as an artist, at least right now, okay? I am looking for flowers. So that's what's happening in this painting, okay? So right now, I am just getting that pigment down. I have now made what looks like a stalk or a branch or something like that, and I've kind of dragged that through the pigment. Uh, that dragging through the pigment is also um, a really good way of learning how to uh, open up your painting and bring light back into your painting. It's also teaching you how to lift pigment. So it's it's a good um, tutorial to practice those things because we need to learn how to drag our brush through pigment and remove it and, and blot it off on maybe our paper towel and stuff like that. So uh, the other thing that has now emerged, it almost looks like little aliens hanging upside down there in the top right quarter of that paper. Um, I saw initially a bud form on its own. The paint created like a stem with a little pod like bud. And that's where this painting, that's all it took was me to see that and I ran with it and then I create some on my own, okay? And I do that in those large open space that I had there. So right now I am creating uh, more, uh, more of this effect that I do, call, I call it rays, and I'm just dragging that brush through 
the pigment and lifting it and wiping it off on my paper towel and then going back in and doing it again. So now you see me adding more uh, depth here, okay? In the background, I want it to look like there's shadows, okay? So maybe there's like a dangling flowers or there's something going on back there. I want a field of depth. And also, because I use a white watercolor, it is a correction material, but it is a white watercolor. Because I do use a white watercolor and it creates very unique effects, the, the best effects that come from it are when the pigment is very, very heavy and very dark. So that's where you see me really going in and really adding that background depth that's needed for the painting. Now I'm just going in and adding more depth with some green. And I'm also, I, I think I'm adding just a few other blues in there. I'm not even remembering exactly which ones I, I was grabbing, but, uh, Use what you have. You don't have to use exactly what I'm using. I want you to create your own art. Um, I know some of you do like to copy and that's the best way for you to learn, um, but I really encourage you, especially with this intuitive way of painting, is to really, really create your own things that you see and just build, use those fundamental things that I'm teaching you and put them into your own painting. Now, as you can see, I just keep, keep going until I get it to the lightness that I want in that area. But I'm also having to keep an eye on the, the other parts of a painting. We don't want to keep our focus on one area and then another section of our painting is drying or suffering and things are, 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 are getting out of control. So you always have to keep your eye moving around your painting and checking and making sure things aren't going crazy. So as you can see, these little pod-like things, they almost look like, in the end, they almost look like little tulips hanging upside down, but, but tulips don't hang upside down. So I'm not sure what they are. They could be coming from, uh, the look of them might be coming from something I've seen a long time ago, but I don't think so. These are just coming from what transpired in the painting, and then I created into something. But if you, if they look like something to you guys, uh, let me know what you think you're seeing. It's interesting. Um, sometimes I don't know what I'm what I'm creating, and somebody else will say, "Ah, that looks like a calla lily or something like that." You know what I mean? So um, let me know what you think. Okay, so now I'm just watching what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm going in and I'm I'm just keep dragging through these areas lifting just because what's happening is that paper is very wet and the pigment just keeps encroaching in what I have already lightened up it just keeps keeps filling up that space so I have to keep going in and keep removing until the thing starts setting, the pigment starts setting a little bit and it stops spreading. So right now I just have to actively keep working at it. Again, now I'm just adding more depth in the background. So right now I'm building kind of around those like branch um, things that are happening that I'm building and um, just bringing that depth into the background while keeping the branch in the foreground. I'm using a number 12 um, round 
it's a sable. All that stuff is usually in my descriptions. I kind of throw a list of what I use into the description so you can always go in there and check it out. And that'll, those links will take you to Amazon where you can buy the stuff. Again, I'm, I'm not using a lot of different colors here. Um, less is more because the more colors you put into a painting where you're actually putting color down and letting the pigments blend on the paper, the more pigments you put into the painting, the more opportunity for mud. So less colors, less possibilities of mud. So I'm not mixing paint colors on the side. These are actually mixing on the paper. Right now you're seeing the white water color coming into play. This is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White Water Color. It is a correction material that they have created for their paint line. Um, but I have um, chosen to use this within my body of work of art and um, it creates very cool aesthetics. Now up at the top left you can see how that white watercolor, because it's very thick in consistency, I have a brush that is, I use a quill and that quill is full of water. I dip it into the into the product and then I dip it back into the water again. So there's a, so I'm reducing I'm not making a consistency on my tray for that effect I'm creating that consistency on the actual brush and then I go in and I shake it over the painting and it has that splattering effect in there and it gives a very bouquet like natural organic bouquet effect instead of like the little round circles that you can scrub out I'm not doing that so right now you see me just doing these like little rays, um, a little bit more with my paintbrush and they're a little bit more defined, they're smaller, but I think it's a really cool effect to kind of still allow all that background of that pure white, um, uh, pure white paper to show through but it also showcases the color and the pigment really beautifully and it gives that ray effect. So in my eyes as an artist, I'm looking at, at it as, as light is um, streaming through these hanging, uh, dangling flowers. So now what you see me doing is I'm using um, Daniel Smith's Quinacridem Sienna. And I'm very gently, very cautiously doing uh, like little flowers on um, some stems. And I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. I'm loosening things up now a little bit, I'm kind of playing around with the color. Um, I will break loose here in a minute. Right now, this is be, me being very cautious of what I'm doing, trying to figure out how do I make this work? What am I going to do here? So it's all a matter of just being creative and expressing yourself and... Um, putting the pigments down where you feel like they need to sit, but also letting them do their own thing, like right there. So I filled up, this is just my number 12 round brush. It doesn't have a ton, it doesn't hold a ton of water, um, but I go in, I fill it up with water, I grab the pigment, and I, sh I probably grabbed a little bit more water on the brush and then did a shake over the painting, kind of in the branch-like areas so the, those would fall on the branches. So now I'm dragging that red paint um, through that branch, which kind of given the branch a really cool effect. So now the colors are mixing together even more and it's kind of creating a really kind of cool 
translucent kind of green and, and, and red uh, brown kind of color. So it's really pretty. It turned out really nice. So now I'm just moving the pigment now with my brush, spreading it out, creating some kind of flowers. Um, not sure where these are going. It's all intuitive. And I'm just adding depth right now to the center of those so-called flowers. So we don't wanna just spread it out and just let it be. We need to add some depth to it so that the eye goes deep into the painting. And I just have some white watercolor now, and I'm putting in some highlights, just kind of playing with them on the bud. So now my brush is filling up with that red uh, sienna on my brush, and it's also mixing on the brush itself. I don't have it mixed to the side. This is all happening. The mixing is all happening on the brush. And now I am finding out that the paint that's coming off my brush is kind of a real soft peachy color and it turns out so beautiful. This opaque watercolor creates a, uh, a paint that's like gouache. It is not gouache, but it looks like gouache and it turned out so beautiful. And these buds, if you look at them real close, they turn out really pretty because the red is kind of mingling still within the color. It just turned out effortless, effortlessly beautiful. Um, I really, this is probably one of my more favorite paintings. Um, I'm not sure why, but it just, I, it's really pretty. And then I noticed up at the top right, it almost looks like a mosquito, like a big mosquito there um, of blue and green and like he's got legs with shoes on. <laughs> and then you can see his little, uh, little thing coming out of his mouth that sucks the blood. Um, not, I thought it was funny. It was like, oh my God, I got a big mosquito on my painting. You have to let me know if you can see the mosquito. Maybe I've been in Florida too long. <laughs> Actually, the mosquitoes are not horrible here. They're really not. We have a lot of frogs and alligators. And now I'm just going in with a little bit more brighter white. So I have those peachy colors down and now I'm just kind of, the brighter white's coming into play. Something didn't happen right there. So I'm just putting a little Dr. PH Martin in that spot to cover up a mistake. Something didn't quite work out there. And again, just going in and doing some highlight work on those branches. Just kind of pulling the painting together here in the very last stage. So when you guys are working intuitively like this, be prepared, it's very messy. And I do work on a larger sheet of paper and I do that because I'm able to really um, loosen up a lot. Um, I can get my body more involved. If I'm working on a small piece of paper, it's just my wrist and my hand that's working. Now you can see my arm is actually coming into play and there's a lot more movement. 
So therefore, when I paint, I paint usually on a much larger scale than a lot of other artists. And I would say most of my paintings are on about a size of a half a sheet. Okay, now I'm just doing fine details, making the rays. I'm using a liner brush. I'm not trying to close in any of those um, white spaces that are still there. I want to keep that still open so that the light can escape. A lot of times we close things in, you guys, and we don't wanna do that. Okay, so the bottom right of my painting is very light in, in, in color. I don't close it in. I don't want dark color all around. I want the light to be escaping. So as you can see, those rays right now are coming from the left and working out towards that bottom right where it is a lot lighter in color. Now I have Mission Gold red, um, light red coming into play. It's almost the same thing as Daniel Smith's Quinn, um, Quinn Sienna. So if you don't have Quinn Sienna, just use your light red. And there is one bud up at the top that the, the green just flows right into the bud and it has all these like little vein looks look to it and it's really cool. So when the, when the painting is scrolling by at the end, you'll have to catch that. It turned out really cool. It's those interesting things. Sometimes you have to just let the painting do its thing and don't touch it. You know, I could have looked at it and said, oh no, oh no, I got to fix that. But I, I let it go. I let it do its thing. And you want that to happen in your painting with watercolor because then the watercolor's beauty shines through on your painting because you're creating the, you know, you're, you're creating and pulling the painting together, but the watercolors are also doing their own thing. It's like God's hand is in this uh, media along with you. So let the watercolor also do its thing. Don't try to control everything. That's when you're successful with your painting and those interesting things show up. Again, I'm just adding more depth and value. I want, um, I want to be able to uh, make the viewer's eye see deep into the painting. Now, I am building on top of that opaque white watercolor, and it gets a little bit murky right there in the areas that I'm, wor I'm working right now. Um, and that can be kind of tricky. Um, so, and now I'm just adding even more white to see if that helps out a bit, and it does. You'll have to let me know what you guys think of this painting. Um, I hope you guys, if you do like my channel, um, please subscribe. If you hit the little bell, once you subscribe, then you have the option to hit the little bell. If you hit the bell, it will notify you when a new video of mine comes out. Um, you don't have to watch it right away. It'll be sitting in there in your, in your little sidebar um, waiting for you to watch at a later time. So... Uh, Please do that. I also have a Facebook group if you guys want to come over there. Um, it's a small group right now. It's growing. I think we're getting close to a thousand people right now. Um, I'm in there on a daily basis. I'm not there all day long, but I check in and I see what's going on and what's being posted and maybe give you a little feedback. If you want, um, please ask 
if you want me to um, look at your painting and give my um, give my two cents, then uh, you're going to have to ask. I don't particularly like to give my two cents unless I'm actually asked. And soon, I'm hoping by, gosh, I don't know when it's going to be, um, I'm hoping by late, well, maybe not late spring, maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be early summer, I'm not sure, because time is flying by so quickly that I'm hoping to get a um, website up so I can uh, sell my paintings, and I also want to do some paid-for tutorials that'll probably be offering so that's all coming here in the summer hopefully early summer late late spring would be great but I don't know how long it'll take people to build my website once I get them started so in the meantime you guys I'm com nearing completion here of this painting in the meantime I want you guys to be safe out there in this crazy world that we're living in um, stay well okay and may God bless you guys all with your lives and your art. And until next time, bye for now.